my God, I finally figured something out with this AI car driving around a racetrack. And I'm so excited today because I found a way to get them to go around the track. So I just have to stop for a moment and just record this progress. So this is what I got. I just had a bunch of cars. I made an oval track and I wanted the AI to drive the car around the track without banging into the walls. The gray walls are the checkpoints and they're transparent. You know, the car could drive through them. And the yellow black walls, these are the barriers that are outlining the shape of the track. So when I saw this happen and the cars get all lined up, kind of like, uh, you know, like they do in NASCAR, I was so happy because I had seen so many times where they don't move or they move straight. And then when they come around the corner, they crash into the, into the wall there, or sometimes they go backwards and everything. So when I saw this, the cars racing around the track, my heart, it just slept for joy. So I'll tell you the settings I'm using for this and, um, I'll show you what I did to set up the scenario and then I'm going to try some experiments with different things because right now if you look at it the cars they're all basically triggers and you know they're overlapping on top of each other which you know if I'm gonna make a game the cars are not gonna overlap with each other so alright so I have a track here um, I practiced making tracks just putting down borders like with um, unity cube objects that I make into like walls to go around the track but that was taken like too long it was too much work so what I did instead was I just made a track in Blender, okay, like following my make a racetrack tutorial, where I just make a shape and I have it follow around a curve in Blender. There's other tutorial on that. And then, uh, as you can see here, I had the issue where I had to have the ground that the car was on be distinguishable from the barrier because the car will always be touching the ground. So I couldn't have a track where the ground and the and the barrier were the same object, you know. So what I did was I just made a whole track in Blender, but then I just have it, I have it go below um, a regular Unity cube here, so that I have two different objects to distinguish between the ground and the track. All right. Then um, the checkpoints here, they're just they're just cubes. I just put a transparent material on them, and that material, you know, the, they don't have to be visible. That I could like have them hidden. Um, they're static. They're not going to move. Right, um, but that's just to like in a racing game, you usually have the checkpoints that you set up along the track, so you could like record progress, uh, you know, positioning and everything as they're going around the track. And then the car, that's the important part, the car itself. So the car has, uh, it's a it's a ML it's an agent script from the ML agent library. So this project, of course, since I'm using, um, it's not AI navigation. This project, since I'm doing this, I went and had to download the ML agents package from the package manager, okay? So that I could like code to communicate with the ML agents library that's written in Python. So when I downloaded the ML agents library, um, I also downloaded Anaconda. It's a software tool to help in programming with Python, except I didn't have to write any program in Python. I just downloaded the ML agent library from GitHub and then had the um, install the ML agent library on my system using Anaconda. And this is a command prompt to the ML agent Python library. And this is where, you know, I kind of set up the command ML agents learn car agent. I made my own um, training config file. And when I run this, it starts the ML agent library to be listening for a unity project running. And my unity project running is this one. And the car is going to communicate with the ML agent library because I put on, I created and put a component on the cars called a, agent script, right? So if you take a look at the script, it's basically this. And let me zoom in so you could see it easier. And then uh, I just have to use the Unity ML agents. And then I could change the class from deriving off of mono behavior to derive off of agent. And now I could write functions to talk to the ML agent library, you know, therefore taking advantage of the powers of neural networking and machine learning. So I have a car speed, a car turn speed. I have to have a reference to the rigid body of the car, you know, and uh, since the training happens in episodes, like every time something happens bad, like I touch a wall, I restart an episode. I reposition the cars to their original starting point and start over again. You know, it's like, oop, reset. You hit a wall, reset. So to store the reset position and rotation, I just have these variables here. Then as I'm going along the track to know which wall is this car currently aiming to go through, I have the current wall variable. See, so all the walls, if I look at my checkpoints object here, I have all these walls, wall zero, one, two, three, four. So that's what the current wall variable holds. And uh, then to 
you know, interact with the checkpoint walls, I have a, a pointer to the checkpoint script. So here on the checkpoints, I have a script and, you know, that manages all the walls and I could just ask the checkpoint script, what's the next wall if I was at wall zero? And checkpoints passed was just me. I don't even know if this is absolutely necessary. I'll be testing that out um, afterward. But as I pass more and more checkpoint walls to get to the next checkpoint wall, I was increasing the reward, you know, as it goes along. So initializing, you know, I get my variables here. On episode begin, this is what happens. The training happens in episodes for each car. It's, it's happening in episodes so that hopefully you get an episode that just doesn't end and it's trained. And uh, on the beginning of the episode, you can see here, I reset the position of the car. I reset it to be the first wall because all my cars are here. This is wall zero. I put all my cars when they start between the last wall and the first wall. So their first wall to aim at will be wall zero. And um, I make sure to set the rigid body velocity to zero because uh, in my last tutorial, I had a thing where the car was going faster and faster. Every time I was getting reset, it, it just kept on picking up more and more speed. And I was like, why is that happening? That's happening because the car could be moving along the track it hits the wall. It was going at a certain velocity because with the rigid body, I'm just adding force to make the object move forward. Then all of a sudden, I just transpose the position here, but it still had that velocity moving it forward. So the cars are going faster and faster. So that's why I had to put this here. When the episode begins, make sure there is no velocity. And you know, whenever you know, here we go. Checkpoints past zero. Um, heuristic is just so I could manually control the cars to make sure that I got my settings right. So like here, if I take off the brains from the cars. Let me just select all the cars. And then here in the behavior parameters, the model is the brain. Okay. So I could take off the neural network brain, say none, and that would lead to me controlling the cars with my heuristic function or the cars not moving, but I have the heuristic function. So I'm going to be the one controlling the cars. So if I start to press play, the heuristic function is a way for me to give input to the cars acting like if I'm the brain, you know? So here we go. These later versions of Unity, they take longer to start up when you press play, I notice. All right, so here we go. The cars are here. I can press forward. The cars are moving forward. I could turn. And of course, the uh, stuff with on episode, begin and end is still in there working. So everyone that hits a wall, it winds up getting reset and starting another episode. The cars are going around a track. And I could also move backwards, you know? So that's what the heuristic function does. It enables me to control the cars, me pressing with the keyboard arrow keys. I'm controlling the cars and that just makes sure everything works, you know, that, you know, you touch the wall, they, they control, they move the way they want to. Once I have that set up, the heuristic function, eh, I could just put it away, but at least I know if the cars are being able to be controlled properly, then I know when the neural network is going to control them, that it will make sense. And this is left over from when I tried using braking, that I was going to let the cars break. But I found that the one that you just saw that was demonstrated, it just had to have movement and turning. All right, so in the behavior parameters component, you, I set the type to discrete and the branch size to, um, oops, it's actually two, and I'll explain that. Basically, over here in the behavior parameters, uh, once again with this thing with the script, but in the behavior parameters, um, the name I give here, the behavior name, that's going to be the name of the neural network file that it will create for me. All right, now when I have one car or many cars using the same behavior name, then all these cars are basically acting like different instances and experiences for the same brain. So they basically train the same brain that is named here and behavior name. And it's a way of increasing the training speed that it doesn't have to take as long to train because I'm multiplying the experiences by the amount of cars. Vector observation are the neural network nodes going in to the neural network. That's the information that I'm feeding into the neural network. In this particular scenario, since I'm using this object here, the ray perception sensor, I don't need to worry about setting vector observation because using the ray perception sensor 3D, it's going to control how many observations are sent into the neural network for me. So all I have to worry about is the vector action. These are the outputs of the neural network. And I want to have two output nodes. Each node, node 0 and node 1, will have three values. Okay, And that's, that's what that's about there. And right here where it says model, remember, that's where I could take a model after I trained the brain, I could take a trained brain and boop, I could put it on there. Okay, which I guess I'll put it back on. Well, no, I'll leave it off because I'm going to be playing around with that later. So that's the on action received that that happens. Now, when I have a car agent script, in order to get 
my action receives sent to my car from the neural network, I have to use another component called the decision requester to request the brain or the ML agent's neural network library to send me some actions to do, to send me the output of those two last nodes on the neural network. Okay, and you could say how many decisions per period that you want to send. So if it's something that decisions don't have to be made that quickly, something where your game object doesn't have to have quick reflexes, like driving, you have to have quick reflexes, then I guess you could lower the decision period to a higher number. But I want my decisions to come, I want my cars to have quick reflexes to be able to react quickly, so I basically set my decision period down to the lowest number, one. All right, so here is my translation for the actions that come out at the other end of a neural network. So my first action is going to be in position zero of the action array, because in C-sharp, arrays start from position zero. So for vector action zero, there can be three values that I say that were set. Remember, right here, branch zero, three values. And discrete means that the values are integers, they're whole numbers, not any fractions of a number. So the actions for three values, zero, one, and two. So if it's zero, I move my car back. If it's one, I don't move my car at all. And if it's two, then I move my car forward. Now, since it's a racing game and I want the cars to move forward, basically, I reward very, very tiny amount because they're going to be moving forward consistently throughout the entire game. I don't want to like make so much reward that things are off balance. So that, that's part of the training part that was hard to figure out. Like what, what values I put for these things that balances everything out, you know? So here for moving forward, I gave it this value of a reward. Positive values are encouraging. Negative values are discouraging in action. So I definitely don't want my car to stay still. So I give it a big fat minus one if the car stays still. It kind of feeds that into a little network and the brain learns to not stay still. Then over here, if you move backward, I give it a negative value as well, but not that much. Maybe it's going to use the moving backward to slow the car down, you know, if it's coming in too fast for a turn. So, you know, I just give it a small value. So these are the three movement actions. Then the other thing a car has to do, the other action type is turning, right? So on my branch one, I have the turning. So vector action one, I have three values as well, left, straight, or right, right? So same thing here, except, you know, I'll let the brain decide which way is the way to turn. I don't know which is the way to turn. It's gonna have to figure that out itself. So there's no rewards on these things. They're just actions that happen when the values come in to the on action receive method, okay? So that's that. Now, this would enable the car to move, getting instructions from the ML agent's library or the neural network brain that is trained that I provide. Now I have to also decide something else. I have to decide when does an episode restart itself, right? So in my mind, I figure there's two ways an episode can restart itself. One is if it failed, okay? It died, it fell off a cliff or whatever. And in this scenario, it's when the car hits a barrier when it hits one of those yellow walls, then I totally don't want that to happen. I want the car to be, learn how to drive around without hitting that. So I say, okay, this is a scenario where I'll say episode end, restart. Start to drive around that track without hitting a wall. So at first I had this as add reward minus one with my other values the way they were. And I was having trouble when the car came around the corner. By the time it got to the corner, it, it wouldn't slow down enough and it would hit the wall here. So I kind of increased the value for punishment when it hits the wall to two. And I came happily back from going and getting a haircut and saw the cars driving around the track and whoo, that's why I was so happy right now. Um, over here, if you go through a checkpoint, this is an encouraged action. And as you can see, there's many checkpoints on the track, right? So as the car is between um, checkpoints, that's its next checkpoint target. Then when it passes through there, that's its next checkpoint target. And then that's the one. And that kind of, you know, I'm incentivizing the car to move to the next checkpoint always. So that's what's going on here. Um, there's a trigger collision with a checkpoint wall. Then I check to make sure, is this the wall it's supposed to hit next? Because some of the cars would turn around and go backwards. Then if it's the wall it's supposed to hit, uh, I just figure out a reward increment. And you know what? The checkpoint's passed. I didn't increment checkpoints passed. Oh, well, so this really did nothing. It wasn't increasing the reward. Uh, it's a code error. This should have been like plus plus here. OK. So every checkpoint pass the increment gets a little bit bigger. So it's one, then it's 1.01, 1.02, 1.03. You know, I, I just figured something to encourage it to keep going around all the walls. And then I call the checkpoint script to figure out what's the name of the next wall if I'm at wall zero, and that becomes my current wall. And that's how it kind of 
kind of loops around all the walls. So, you know, that's basically it. And this was the trigger method. This is something I left over from when I was trying to do collision method with the wall. So this is what I had for the script that actually worked with the training and those are the values. Now with the script, you could either run, when you try to do a training, you know, you could either run with um, the ML agents learn and then just say force to start a training or you can provide your own configuration file. So as you can see here, this is the training that actually succeeded in teaching the cars how to drive around the track. I type in the command to start the ML agents library to listen. See this little Unity picture? Nice. That means it's ready to go. And then I see these commands until I see the command listening on port 5004. And that's when I would go to Unity and press play and the training begins. The training begins. It figures out what's the configuration it's going to use for training. I kind of provided it with my own configuration details. And um, what I played around with was the summary frequency and the depth, the, you know, here's the neural network and the, the size of the hidden units in the middle of the neural network. The more units in the middle, the better, I guess, the more complex a situation it could learn from because it's got more nodes. And the summary frequency, this is what I had to play around with too because um, I was noticing I would have these no episode was completed since last summary. I looked it up. That's basically a good thing. If you're coming along like this, boom, 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 and the rewards are getting bigger, 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 and then all of a sudden it gets to this, it basically means like, man, this thing's trained. It, it's fully trained. It can't, it, it, the episode is continuing. It's not ending. Since I had only one situation where the episode ended, it was when it hit the wall. It just basically wasn't hitting the wall anymore. Great. Then this standard deviation of reward, this is how much the, the reward has changed. So here, these are the values for the average reward. And these are how much the rewards have been changing as they're going along. So you can see from this step to this step, the reward change kind of like went down to zero. It kind of went down to zero, then the training, it learned something again, and then it went back down to zero. And then the neural network just decided to stop itself. And that, I don't know why, but I guess there was nothing else left for it to learn. So just once again, just got to look at this, because I'm so happy. The cars are driving around the track. Woo! And um, the code for this will be on my GitHub for Omar Vision, and the link will be in the description. And um, if you have any questions, you could ask me. If you have any suggestions, you could tell me. I love to hear the suggestions. So sometimes I don't have to suffer through learning it all myself. And why isn't it moving? Oh, because I took the brain off. <laughs> so I just want to leave you off with seeing the cars driving around the track again. And I'm going to go back now and play around with um, some different settings to see if I you know, can get the cars to dodge around each other instead of passing through each other. See what happens. Play a little bit more. Thank you very much. And I leave you with the cars driving around the track. Come on, cars. <laughs> there we go. Vroom. They all get into that. See, it's cool. They, they even know the optimal line to come around the curve on. Race around the curve and go around. This, this is all awesome. Thank you. Have a good day.